Hello everyone. Um, <clears throat> today I'm going to review The Sarkeesian Effect by Jordan Owen. Um, two and a half hours long of a documentary and um, prior to seeing this documentary I saw some other things. First, uh, the Davis Arini uh, rough draft preview cut, which is vastly different. And I've already reviewed, link in the description box. Um, I saw Thunderfoot's uncut uh, whole interview that was used in this um, documentary. And I also saw a parody uh, part one by Kevin Logan another YouTuber. All three linked in the description box. Um, I did not see any responses by uh, Anita Sarkeesian or uh, Stephanie Guthrie or Melody Hensley or anyone else mentioned in the video that was a feminist. Um, I didn't see any responses from them. So that's what I've seen that would color my uh, my opinion on this as well as I've been a youtuber for you know a very long time and uh, I have some other information that I've seen along the way that um, wasn't in the film and and would lend to my understanding of the concepts in it um, and I'll get to that at the end of this video <coughs> So, uh, first, uh, just a rundown of, of uh, things point by point in his video. Not giving away uh, everything, though. I do think that uh, if you want to watch his video, watch his video. Don't, don't watch everyone's reviews. Um, the intro sequence was similar between the Davis Arini uh, Rough Draft preview and what Jordan Owen had. It was the uh, video choice awards, video game choice awards, where they they were giving a Sarkeesian an award. Um, that was where the two kind of split. And I liked the uh, uh, the pin board, the cork board, uh, which, which starts it all off. Um, it's it was kind of long, but uh, the intro sequence with the cork board. Uh, Kevin Logan apparently didn't like it. Uh, but I, th I felt that it showed that some work was being put into this thing. I was ready to see some serious points once I saw the quality of the that animation. Um, so I, you know, Buckled down, got my popcorn, got my Mountain Dew. Um, and I would say, uh, of the first points the movie makes, the hypocrisy of uh, Anita Sarkeesian uh, speaking about a Spider-Man uh, fanfic, uh, her comments after that uh, was a good point uh, made by Owen. Point for Owen, right? Um, Anita's former employer... Uh, being in the telemarketing business and being a known pickup artist. Point, point. Great. Um, <clears throat> where I started to think that the, the narrative was losing me was when it was talking about uh, Elevator Gate and the cottage industry, this is a direct quote, cottage industry of feminists who uh, market their victimhood um, because I feel that's larger than what they're trying to show as the Sarkeesian effect, especially since um, many of these cases predate Sarkeesian's popularity. The Tropes vs. Women came out in 2012. Elevator Gate was uh, 2011. You know, and some of these things were uh, not really... Uh, Related, they were just like it, it shows the the atmosphere on the internet uh, for people who were paying attention, you know, 
people who pay attention to feminist gaffes. That it shows the at, the atmosphere around them, but really, none of these things would have been uh, in the nightly news on any uh, broadcast television except for Anita Sarkeesian and bomb threats. Um, other than that, uh, Mel Melody Hensley's PTSD. Who? What major news network would have ever covered that? You had to be paying attention to that. Uh, click to be able to see th gaffes like that. Um, so, Melody Hensley's PTSD from her Twitter feed was talked about, and right afterwards, there was uh, Nick Rebalik, and he was associating PTSD strictly with military experience, and saying that uh, her PTSD couldn't be something that compares to somebody who served in the military. And as a registered psychotherapist and mental health professional, I'd have to say that is uh, very wrong. Very, very wrong. Um, PTSD is not something that is just experienced by people in the military. It's associated with them. It started as a concept with shell shock, yes, but um, you can have PTSD from bullying. You can have it from the loss of a business. You can have it from being too close to the World Trade Center when it fell. You know, you can have it from uh, a bad relationship where you got beat up. You know, you can have a lot of different sources of PTSD. Um, to say that because her PTSD wasn't uh, physical trauma or wartime trauma related, um, and therefore it's invalid, is is wrong. Um, so I didn't appreciate that inference from the documentary. Um, <clears throat> between minutes 45 and 58, uh, it was mostly just general feminism gaffes. And I was struggling to really connect, like, other than giving us the atmosphere of where feminism was at, how does this all connect to Anita Sarkeesian? But then, uh, around 58 minutes in, it was uh, Stephanie Guthrie, and she was the, the example that tied it back into Sarkeesian because she spoke about Sarkeesian in a speech. Um... And in response to that, there was a segment where Tim Meehan was interviewed, and that was way long and hard to follow. It was like 15 minutes of an interview that I thought was local politics and I did not give a shit about. Um, it lost me. Uh, one hour and 20 minutes into it, there's something that Owen brings up that the rough draft preview of uh, Davis Arini did not bring up, that I I was livid that it wasn't in, in the Davis version. Uh, and that was the Zoe Post. Good. Good for recognizing that um, Gamergate started from the Zoe Post, not having anything to do with Anita Sarkeesian. Um, the Locke Valentine stuff with Zoe Quinn. Uh, great journalism, putting it together. I, I was following that part. Um, at an hour and 30 minutes in, uh, social justice warriors are talked about. And again, just like Elevator Gate or feminism, I feel that that's talking about an effect that is larger than the Sarkeesian effect, and its its scope is broader, and it's not what the title of of the documentary is about, you know. Um, the the gamers are dead articles. Uh, how that was talked about 
about the common narrative collusion. That was great stuff. I would I found that very interesting. Um, I'd heard it before, but the way that it was presented in this documentary really made a, a cohesive narrative that that helps you understand just how um, bad that was. <clears throat> The uh, involvement of Breitbart, that, that organization, in the first Ga Gamergate conference was kind of polarizing to me. I, I immediately don't trust anything from that news source. Um, and uh, Paul Elam being in the documentary, A Voice for Men, that's, that's kind of polarizing. But watching him speak in this documentary... The things that he was saying, I was waiting for something, you know, polarizing to come out, and he really didn't say things that were polarizing. He was actually quite insightful. It's kind of like uh, Marilyn Manson in the Bowling for Columbine documentary. You, know, you expect him to say something shocking, and he's actually the smartest person in the whole documentary. Um, <clears throat> so Paul Elam didn't do that bad. Um, The logical fallacy of countering conversations about ethics and journalism with counterclaiming, oh, well, you're just misogynist, you know, that's misogyny, um, that's good. Keeping it about the ethics and journalism and about the Zoe Quinn thing. And I, for a long time, have... Uh, wondered why people have let the the hashtag Gamergate thing be, be redefined by the uh, the Sarkeesian camp. Um, and let's see. <clears throat> An hour and 57 minutes in, uh, Marxism is brought up as the root of neo-feminist theory, and I think I've, I've spoken about this in other videos, that I don't think neo-feminists realize the roots of their uh, their feminism or their neo-feminism being in Marxism. Okay, This, this is uh, kind of like an outside perspective looking at their movement. They don't see, consider themselves being um, just extensions of some man who wrote something, some hundred years ago, they feel like the movement's their own. Um, but the Marxism angle was only spoken about for about a minute, versus Davis Arini's cut, his rough draft, which was pretty much 30 minutes solid of that. And it wasn't about Sarkeesian at all, it was about Marxism and socialism and let's let's just be modern day McCarthyists and paint them with every ism that would make us uh, harken back to a day when those people should have been burned at the stake. Yay! Um, vastly different from Arini's project in that it's only brought up, you know, very briefly for a minute. Um, the story of the actually raped sex worker that social justice warriors didn't care about uh, fell a little flat for me because I don't I don't see it as something where like well because you care about this well why don't you care about this and why don't you care about this well, these are much bigger topics you know you could any topic that somebody is an advocate for you could say you know there's a hundred different things that they're not caring about and it seemed like that was more of uh, a talking point of the anti-feminists than it was the feminists themselves. I mean, they, it wasn't really something that they had to have an opinion on. Um, so I, re I really didn't follow that. Uh, that Anita Sarkeesian might be a mouthpiece for a group behind the scenes... I think was a good direction for this. Um, I I just wish that the the documentary spent a little bit more time 
uh, addressing the way that Gamergate is now associated with Anita Sarkeesian and not Zoe Quinn. Because Anita Sarkeesian is not the one who had anything to do with gaming journalism as far as you know, the, the ethics angle and, and who did anything wrong. Anita Sarkeesian didn't do anything wrong in, in gaming journalism, but she's successfully uh, gotten the hashtag Gamergate associated with herself. Um, tropes versus women in video games has co-opted Gamergate, th that whole meme, as if it was always about Anita, Anita's series and her career, when it was not. It had nothing to do with her for a long time, for, for months. And then, you know, uh, everyone who was involved in Gamergate as, as the, the prime suspects, the, those who did wrong, they kind of faded back and, and then Anita rose to prominence. That's, that's a point that I didn't really feel like was hammered home. Um, I felt like the documentary uh, became a little self-reflective in itself when it mentioned that uh, Patreon was pe pressured to pull the documentary from uh, the funding project on Patreon. I, f I felt like that was good that um, some of the... Uh, backlash of just building this documentary was in the documentary. I liked that part. Um, at 2 hours and 11 minutes of this documentary, um, there's a segment with uh, what looks like a constellation or a solar system, you know, and while this space is, is uh, on the screen, just space. Um, for a few minutes, there was a quite heady monologue, and it was it, it felt disconnected from the rest of the documentary. It was like it jarred me out of the experience. It, it didn't the the way that it started didn't flow well for me, um, and for a couple minutes, it didn't really get back on track. It was more really general heady stuff. Um, not quoting it because you should go watch it yourself. Um, around uh, two hours and fifteen minutes in, there's a lot more associating feminists with communism and socialism, and there's imagery, and I'm just going to call that part of uh, the narrative of Owen's camp. Neo-McCarthyism, uh, because it's just trying to associate them with uh, groups with similar ideas that have already been demonized, and therefore they are also bad. Um, but the rest of the monologue, I feel, felt was more on target. Um, more than me just criticizing the Neo-McCarthyism aspect of it. Um, I really enjoyed the history of gaming montage in it. Uh, I was looking for games that I was playing through those years, and I realized that I was playing a completely different set of games. Um, I haven't been a console gamer as much as a PC gamer most of my life, so um, I guess I missed out on something there. Uh, I didn't appreciate the inference that Anita's activism might have been uh, inspired by childhood trauma, which was brought up by Paul Elam and the next chick in the, in the documentary um, in the closing sequence of things said directly to Anita Sarkeesian. Um, I did, however, feel that it was brief and nowhere near as big of a deal as the Arini version might have made it, um, because I've been following the, the drama between uh, Davis Arini and, and Jordan Owen, the back and forth, made it look like that might have been a much bigger part of an Arini director's cut 
rather than a Jordan Owen version. Um, and I, w I was glad that it was just those two commenters. Um, I still don't think that that's uh, a tree to go barking up. Um, the soundtrack I felt was pretty good. Uh, it was a little loud during a Thunderfoot segment. Um, I I felt like the the classical style music was kind of the same volume as Thunderfoot's voice. Um, it might have been the machine I was watching on though. Uh, there was one part that I would categorize as gu guitar masturbation, Owen. If you're, if you're listening, you know, um, that kind of soloing I, I don't really uh, like anymore. It reminds me of the '80s. Um, I was thinking about uh, how much better of a guitarist Jordan Owen was than I am. Uh, than what was actually being said during that during that segment, so I actually had to rewatch that segment. Um, that's about uh, all of what I felt about the documentary as as it is. But right now, I'm going to say what was missing from the documentary. Key points here. Um, biggest thing for me being that Gamergate was not about Anita Sarkeesian, and it has been co-opted, and now it is about Anita Sarkeesian. The biggest thing for me is Anita Sarkeesian's appearance on the Colbert Report was not in this documentary. And that was, like, for me, the defining moment where she finally achieved ownership of Gamergate. It is about her now because Stephen Colbert said it was about her and her tropes versus women and had no mention of Zoe Quinn anywhere in that interview. Um, that was the complete dominance of her, of that hashtag, of that meme. And it's nowhere in the documentary. Um... Other YouTubers that had criticized Anita Sarkeesian that could have been in uh, the documentary, like uh, Tool Time, his, his uh, series on her series, nowhere in the documentary, and it could have been very easily. Um, the Amazing Atheist videos, nowhere in this documentary, and... If you're going to say that Thunderfoot uh, helped grow her infamy by, you know, making her a feature of his channel while he was um, doing criticism of her, you'd also have to say The Amazing Atheist, who has a larger s subscriber base, had something to do with it. Um, the falling out of Thunderfoot between, between him and... Free Thought Blogs, and PZ Myers. Nowhere in this documentary. And there was a place for it. There was a whole montage of what was going on in the world during, around this time with, with feminist gaffes. That controversy kind of fit that uh, atmosphere, you know. Uh, Mr. Repsion was in the movie for like two seconds, right? There's a little flash of him, but uh, nothing about the FBI going over to his house because the uh, bomb threat from the uh, University of Utah was signed Mr. Repsion by some troll. Uh, that, I felt like, why wasn't that in if you're going to show two seconds of him that's kind of part of Anita Sarkeesian's story that, you know, it, it's serious. The FBI was sent to somebody's house because of that bomb threat. Um, you did talk about the FBI. You, did, you know, the, I, I just felt like that could have been explored a little bit more, especially since this was a two-and-a-half-hour-long movie Little little things like what I, what I brought up just now, 
not being in it, I felt, you know, there was room. There was room. Um, and even if it would have made it 30 minutes longer, hell, it was already two and a half hours long. <sighs> so, those are my thoughts. Uh, lots of links in the description box. And uh, comment below if you feel like I said something offensive because Lord knows you can't say anything about this subject without someone getting offended.